On January 21st, 2015, the Environmental Protection Agency, states, and industry groups such as the Auto Care Association and the Motor and Equipment Manufacturers Association signed an agreement to reduce the amount of copper and other materials in brake pads. The agreement calls for brake pad manufacturers to limit the copper content in their products nationwide to no more than 5% by weight by January 1st, 2021, and no more than 0.5% by January 1st, 2025. The voluntary initiative also calls for the reduction of mercury, lead, cadmium, asbestiform fibers, and chromium-6 salts in motor vehicle brake pads. So what's wrong with copper? Well, copper has long been used in brake friction materials because it's a good conductor of heat. But here's the problem. As brake pads wear down, copper and other metals can be deposited onto roadways where the contaminants are washed into streams, rivers, and lakes. Copper is toxic to fish, plants, and other wildlife, and it can end up in urban water supplies. California and Washington have led the way on the Copper Free Initiative, with both states enacting copper reduction laws in 2010. Over the past decade, brake manufacturers have moved rapidly to develop, test, and introduce new low copper and no copper friction materials. In fact, some suppliers have always been copper free. These next generation friction materials are mostly being marketed as premium replacement pads and are as good or better than the ones they replace. Some are significantly better in terms of stopping power, fade resistance, wear, and noise reduction. So how can you and your customers tell if a brake friction product complies with these standards? Well, you can look at the leaf mark on the product information label. A single shaded leaf indicates an A-level brake pad that meets the legal standards for asbestos, cadmium, chromium, lead, and mercury. Two shaded leaves indicate a B-level pad that meets the A-level standards for heavy metals and contains no more than 5% copper. Three shaded leaves indicate an N-level pad that meets the A-level standards for heavy metals and contains no more than 0.5% copper. As we move toward the deadlines that we talked about earlier, you're gonna see less of the old high copper product on the shelf and more, more of the new low copper and zero copper taking its place. Eventually, all the old product will go away and every brake pad and shoe will be low or no copper. I'm Josh Cable, thanks for watching.